Hi YouTube. Uh, first I'd like to apologize. My throat's a little hoarse right now. Um, it, there's a lot of pollen in the area. I suspect it's my allergies. Uh, so again, apologies. But today we're going to build a cubby storage unit. Uh, as you can see, this is a, a 12 drawer unit. The drawers are joined by a through dovetail. Um, I have handles on both sides. Uh, this was a request from my wife. Uh, I have uh, three children and they each have their own art supplies uh, and you know with three children our playroom has just gotten away from itself and we just can't keep a handle on it. So my wife asked me if I could build something to try and put some order into their art supplies. So this is what I came up with. I didn't have any plans. It's not perfect but it was a lot of fun. So we're going to go ahead and get started on this build now. Um, and if you enjoy the video, please hit the subscribe button and hit the like button. Thanks. Okay guys, we're going to make this uh, storage cubby out of furniture grade plywood. This is birch. It's three quarters of an inch thick. We're going to cut this down to 18 inches. The, uh, the storage unit is going to be 18 inches wide. And we're going to get that done on the table saw. Okay, so we've uh, we cut all the sections for the birch plywood, the three-quarter inch birch plywood, which is going to make up the unit for the cubby storage system. They're all identical, same sizes. So now we have to uh, join them together. And the way we're, I'm going to do that is uh, just a rabbit joint. And um, what I've done here is I set my dado blade up against a zero clearance fence which is just another piece of scrap birch plywood um, and I think it's set to the right size but when you do these types of cuts you have to uh, send some scraps through to make sure that the the blade is at the appropriate height and that the fence is at the appropriate width so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna see if it if in fact the dado blade is at the appropriate level Power helps. That's pretty close. That's looking pretty good. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to stick with the, the blade height and the fence width for this cut. Okay, so again, we've, um, we've cut uh, rabbits in all four sides of the unit. Um, that's what we're going to use to join all four sides. And then there are going to be two vertical pieces, so I'm going to split it into thirds. And again, for those of you keeping track at home, it's a 48-foot length. So if I'm splitting it into thirds, it's going to be 16 inches a piece. So what I've done is I set the fence back such that 16 inches is the center of my dado bit. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to make, I'm going to make a cut, I'm going to flip it over, make another cut, and I'm going to do that twice. So we're going to have the top and the bottom. So we're going to be able to fit those pieces in there. Then, um, then we have to make the dados 
in those vertical pieces on either side on either side um, of the vertical piece so we could have shelves on either side so we're going to go ahead and get started on this top dado piece Okay, I've cut dados uh, for the tops and the bottoms. Um, these dados are going to accept the vertical supports right here. And what I have to do now is I have to cut dados on either side to uh, so I could slide the shelves uh, inside the, the unit. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to cut the dados on the vertical units now. Now we have to make the dados for the side pieces. Um, of course, it's just going to be one dado on this side going down, and then I'll take the other side and do the same thing. So uh, for the storage cubby unit, I have all I have uh, all the pieces have been milled. The rabbits and the dados have been cut. So what's next is we're going to go ahead and glue this up uh, and clamp it together. And um, and then after that, then we have to put the shelves in. But we're just going to glue the unit together now. And Ethan, I have my son here to help me. So, you ready buddy? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Okay, the storage unit, I left it to dry overnight. I took the clamps off and uh, it's, it looks pretty decent. Uh, all the dados are, are aligned perfectly. Um, they're, they're, this is just a function of the wood and where I bought it. They weren't completely straight. But as soon as I, I slide the, the uh, panels in between the dados, that should straighten everything out. Like this one here is really off. But again, once, once I start sliding those in, it should be straight. And everything's square except for this one right here. But again, once, once, once the panels go into place, it should be nice and square. So uh, that's the theory anyway. So right now, I'm just going to go ahead and, and uh, cut the, the shelves. Um, it's 15 and 3 quarters for those keeping score at home uh, and it's 18 inches deep so it's 15 and 3 quarters by 18 inches deep and I'm not gonna I'm not gonna go ahead and cut 
all of them at 15 and three quarters. Uh, I'm going to save one row till the end. I'm going to put all the all the I'm going to slide all the uh, the shelves in for the first two columns, but the last one here. I'm going to wait and just measure. Just from past experience, uh, it doesn't always uh, measure up. But uh, So that's what I'm going to do. So let's get started. Okay, now that we have all the shelves uh, cut on the table saw, what we're going to do is we're going to put a very light coat of glue on these dado, on the dados here, and it, it, it's pretty tight, so you don't want to you don't want to load up the the glue, so otherwise it's just going to get everywhere. So we're just going to go ahead and do that now. This one's still, it's, it's off by a hair. I mean, I mean a hair, but I think given the quality of the wood and quality of my craftsmanship, I'll take it, so. Okay, so the cubby storage unit has been assembled. The shelves have been inserted into the dado slots. Everything's been glued up, clamped, dried, and uh, it came out really decent. Uh, everything's square. Um, it's very sturdy. Um, that's that's uh, one of the things about working with plywood. It's it's a it's an excellent material to build uh, furniture with. Um, again, it's it's very dense, sturdy, flat, straight. It's it's perfect. Uh, there is a drawback though, and let me just show you real quick. The downside with working with plywood are the plies are visible. And this one is five ply, and you can just see it everywhere. And it's not the best looking feature. In fact, you know, when you're building something and you leave the plies the way it is, it takes away from the the furniture itself because all your eyes are just drawn to the plies and not the actual product so what we're gonna do so what we're gonna do today is we're gonna use what's called edge banding and what edge banding is it's it's this right here it's a veneer it's actual this is birch plywood it's three quarter inches long this is birch veneer edge banding and what it is is you have a veneer birch on one side and you have glue on the other side and what you do is you they say to cut it a little bit proud of the length that you actually need and what we're going to do is we're going to have the interior side flush with the veneer and we're going to heat it with an iron and then we're going to roll it and then there's going to be some extra material here because the plywood is, is three quarters, but the, the actual width of the edge banding is seven eighths. So there's going to be excess that I'm going to have to trim. That's why I'm going to have it flush on the inside and have the excess on the, on the outside so I could trim it. 
So we're going to go ahead and get started on that now. Okay, so let's just uh, recap. Um, this is a 4x4 cubby storage unit. Um, I used um, 3 quarter inch plywood, birch plywood, and um, I have the edge banding on all the sides so you don't see the, the uh, plywood edges. Um, this was uh, pretty decent. Um, it, it wasn't too technical. I, I have um, I had I rabbited the, the ends here, the corners rather, and I dadoed the uh, the dividers going you know vertical and horizontal. So it came out it came out pretty decent. Um, I, I went through uh, two two sheets of of eight by four plywood. Um, and just a little bit more. Uh, I know, you know, when you go to Home Depot or to Lowe's, you could buy a two by four foot section. I needed one of those. You, you pay more when you buy it like that, but that's that's all I needed for this. So, um, all told, this was about a hundred and twenty dollars. Uh, the next step, as I mentioned before, is a hard hard part. It's making the drawers for all the twelve cubbies. Uh, I'm going to attempt to uh, join the boxes with a through dovetail. Um, I'm going to make that out of, you see right here, that's 10 inch wide um, pine. Uh, I have eight boards at eight feet uh, in length and that also was about $120. So the next step is we're just going to go ahead and cut up all that lumber. Like I said, there's 12 of them, so there's, there's quite a bit of uh, time on the table saw. So let's get started. Okay, so I have all the, um, uh, maybe I, I, I'm not sure if I mentioned. All right, so the, the boxes are going to be 10 inches tall by 16 inches deep by 14 inches wide. And I have cut all the 16 inch, what are going to be the sides uh, of, of the uh, box on my miter saw. Um, I don't have a I don't have stops on my miter saw, so I basically what what I do, like many of you, you know, you'll put the piece that you just cut. If you need multiple, you'll you'll take your first one and then you'll trace that with the blade. It's not exactly perfect. So what I like to do is I just want to send everything through here. I'm just going to cut off maybe, you know. A few thousandths of an inch, just to just to chew them up. If it's if it's a little less than 16 uh, inches, that's fine. Yeah, it's it's my box. I can make it whatever size I want. So that's what we're gonna do right now.
Okay, so uh, we just cut all our sides to be the exact length. In this case, it's going to be uh, 15 and 3 quarters. And the fronts and the backs, which are 14 inches in. What we did is we sent them through the uh, table saw to make sure that they are identical. Uh, all the sides are going to be the exact same uh, length, as well as the fronts and the backs are also going to be the exact same length. Now, when I when I got these at the big box store, they it's a it's a 10 inch piece of pine. Just because it says that it's 10 inches, you can't trust that, especially from these big box stores. Nothing against the big box stores, just that you know sometimes the the quality isn't isn't the best. So you have to make sure that that the uh, the width of your piece are going to be identical, whether it's the fronts and backs or the sides. They all have to be the exact same width, especially if it, you know when we're when we're dovetailing. Uh, you know, we're making this box, uh, you know, other types of joints, it's just as important to make sure that everything is identical, okay? But especially when you're dovetailing it, it's critical that it, the widths are, have to be the same. So what we're going to do is we're just going to run all the pieces through the table saw to make sure that the width will be identical across every single side and front and back. Okay, so let's get started on that. Okay, so we've cut all the pins and tails uh, on all the sides and fronts and backs uh, for our box that we're going to be joining together. Uh, one thing about the box is you're going to need a bottom. And I'm going to make that out of just quarter inch MDF. It's strong and it's, uh, it does the job and it's just easy to work with. But one thing that we have to do is we have to cut a dado in the bottom uh, this is just a piece of scrap here, but we have to cut a bottom on the inside to accommodate the quarter inch um, MDF to, that'll make up the bottom. Now, problem with cutting a dado, I guess I should show you, is you have to be careful because, um, well, let me just show you. Especially on the on the tails, you can't cut a dado the entire length of the board. Otherwise, you're going to see it when it's put together. And again, let me just uh, show you what I mean. Okay, I cut the quarter inch dado, but as you can see it, it goes right into the tail. And that this tail is exposed, so you're going to see that uh, when you put the two together. Let me just put these together here real quick.
Okay, as you can see, you can see that quarter inch dado at the end of that tail, and that's pretty ugly. Uh, you don't want, you know, that's going to be seen. Uh, so we have to figure out, <clears throat> we have to figure out what we're going to do to hide that. And what I've done here. <clears throat> I made a uh, jig on my shaper table, my router table, and if I put the, the piece in, it goes right up against the stop here, it should go right into the tail, but not, but not all the way, so, so it's, it's going to come up probably a quarter inch from the end of the tail so that when you put it together you you won't be able to see the dado cut so let's give that a try mentioned before I, I put I put this into the stop it should be about a quarter inch from the end of the tail on the leading edge but I also put a stop here on this side on this side here so when it comes here again it should be about a quarter of an inch from the trailing edge on this tail here and I'll just take it out so hopefully again that dado cut won't be seen from the end grain let's, let's try this Okay, as you can see, the dado begins right about here and ends right about here, and you can't see it from the end grain. This is, is exactly what we want. So we're going to go ahead and cut these. All, we just have to worry about this uh, with the tails. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, yeah, with the tails. On the pins, you don't have to worry about it because it's going to be covered, it's going to be hidden by the tails. And uh, we'll I'll show you here in a second.
Okay, um, what I'm doing now is I'm just gluing the, the ends here before I, I pound them together. Uh, very, very little glue. You don't need a whole lot, just really a drop uh, in between the tails and pins. That's all I'm using. And I'm telling you, when with the glue and it's tight, as I made these, you know, the tolerances are very, very, uh, they're not very, very forgiving. And you know, with this glue here, these, these things will never come apart, which is what you want. I probably should have made. I probably shouldn't have made it so tight. Um, next time, I'll adjust my jig such that it'll be a little smoother joining the two pieces, the pins and the tails, but it's still all right. Okay, we got that one done. Going to take our bottom and uh, as I mentioned, or as I saw, whoops, whoa. <laughs> mistake. Pretty big mistake. It's good to have your uh, dado for the bottom piece aligned. Mine was not. So we'll try this again. Call this a woodworking hack for nothing. Glue. Drop. And let's try this again. Line this up. Alright, let's try this again. Okay. They line up now. Okay. Square. Having the square is good. Okay, we're gonna take our bottom piece. Again, it's a quarter inch MDF. We're gonna put them into the dados that we cut. We're not going to glue. We're not going to glue this at all. Um, this is going to allow for expansion and contraction. So we are not going to glue this. But we are going to glue these right here. So I'm using such little glue that very little of it is coming out when I hammer the two pieces together, which is good. Kind of got to act quick though because the glue is setting up. I know this is a nice good fit because this is the glue from before when I made a mistake and just about the entire exposed area has glue on it from a little drop. So, that's a good sign. All right, make sure the dado is lined up, it is. Oops.
This is looking pretty good. This is awesome. Okay, and I'm just going to put a couple clamps on here for good measure. Trying to find a spot where there's a gap, and to be honest, it's, it's looking pretty good. So, do that. We'll put a couple more up top. I really like these DeWalt. Uh, quick vices that I got. Much better than these uh, Irwins. Okay. Okay, we're going to put this aside and we're going to go ahead and we're going to start on the rest of the drawers. Uh, I think I only have the capacity to do about four at a time, so. Uh, but we'll see when, when we're all done with all 12, okay? See
Okay, so I finished putting two coats of this Danish oil. And again, for those who are interested, I'm using medium walnut. Uh, this is Watco Danish oil. Great stuff. Put two coats of oil on the, the, uh, the cubby unit. And I also put a, a coat of polyurethane. And I'm using Minwax Fast Drying Polyurethane Clear Satin. This is an oil base. Uh, you're going to want oil base uh, for this. Um, just to get the look that I'm trying to achieve. Uh, so I put one coat of polyurethane on here. Um, and I'm going to take 220 sandpaper to it and lightly sand it. And then I'm going to apply another coat of polyurethane to it, and it's going to give it a nice, very subtle shine to it. It's not going to be too much, just, just a little bit. Once I'm done with that, um, as you can see, I have uh, the drawers all over the place. Um, those also have two coats of the Danish oil on it. So uh, as soon as I'm done sanding and applying the polyurethane, uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna do the same to to the drawers. So we're we're getting there. We're 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 close. We're getting close. So I'm gonna go ahead and start the sanding now. And when I come back, I'll have a coat of polyurethane applied after the sanding. See ya. Okay, so um, we're back to, pardon me, my voice is uh, it's a bit uh, hoarse right now. It's all the pollen in the air. Um, we're back to the boxes. Um, if you read the instructions on your polyurethane, it'll tell you to, you know, apply a coat and then go back over it. It'll tell you to um, apply a coat and then go back over it with 220 grit sandpaper. Um, and I've done that. I just think that 220 is a, 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 you know, the bite's just a little too strong, I think. Uh, so I'm using uh, 320 for the boxes. We're just going to go ahead and go all, all sides on the inside here, 320 on all 12 of them, and then we're going to apply another coat. So here's the fun part. guys <clears throat> again apologize about my throat I'm a little hoarse uh, this morning um, in any event I have applied four coats of polyurethane to the uh, cubby unit one thing that we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to apply some paste wax to all the shelves in the unit we're also gonna have to apply paste wax to the bottoms of the drawers here the uh, reason why we're going to do that is presumably, you know, the, the drawers are going to be uh, sliding in and out, and that's going to wear on the polyurethane that's here already. Uh, so it's just going to another layer of protection. But right now, like I said, there's four coats. It's hard as nails. It's it's looking pretty good. So we're getting close. All right. So now we're again we're going to put the paste wax on. Okay, so, <coughs> okay, so, the only thing we really have left to do is put the handles on 
and I kind of made a cheater here, a little jig. And now I have my uh, my X and my Y right here. And what I did is I grabbed the 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 uh, width of of this drawer here. And I found the the center point of that. And what I did is I took the width of my handles and I half half of that I went to the to the left and half I went to the right from that center point and that should give me the um, that should make the handle center and at the appropriate height that I wanted so let's give this a shot Not bad. It's pretty good. So I'm just going to go ahead and put the handles on the rest of the 12 uh, drawers and we'll see when we're done. Okay, so that concludes the build of the Cubby storage unit with the through dovetail drawers. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I enjoyed uh, building this. Uh, like I said before, you know, uh, with with most of my projects, it's not 100% perfect. There are a lot, there are some flaws here, uh, but it, I, you know, again, I learned from it. I enjoyed the heck out of it, and um, I I got to be honest with you, I didn't realize how much how time consuming all these drawers were going to be. So uh, that was a, a a great learning experience there. But I think overall they came out nice. Um, I think I mentioned before that. You know, I, I went the cheap route. Um, I don't think I spent more than $300 for all the material, including the handles. Um, and the wood, I bought it at a big box store. Uh, there are two types of pine board you can get, the decent stuff and the cheap stuff. I went with the cheap stuff. Now, the cheap stuff um, has a lot of knots in it. And that is a problem, um, especially when, you're, when you have, uh, when you're, uh, joining with it with a dovetail uh, and and you know it did cause some issues but by and large I think some of these these nuts add a little bit of character uh, maybe that's just me but I like the look of it so uh, again uh, this was uh, fun to build I hope you guys enjoyed it if you did hit the subscribe button hit the like button and we'll see you next time thanks guys